Hey everyone, and welcome to the 13th episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to learn how to make effects that consist of multiple colors. We'll be using multiple different methods to achieve our effects. I've already prepared a sample light effect in our chain. It consists of a couple arpeggiators and a couple chords. And now I'm going to create a velocity mask for it. So first I'm going to group this effect entirely. This is not necessary, but it's going to help us because then we can just stop thinking about our effect. So I'm just going to rename it into effect and then I'm going to collapse it. And now I don't have to worry about it anymore. Then I'll add a MIDI effect track and this will serve as my velocity mask. For each key, I'm going to define a different velocity. So for example, for this inner key segment, I'm going to define a velocity of five, which is a red color. So I'm going to start by adding a red velocity. And now I only want this to affect this inner circle. And since we cannot cut this key zone up in order to only affect these buttons, what we can do is we can ignore the first key zone entirely and add a MIDI effect track here with multiple empty chains that serve as our pass-through chains. Then drag all of your key zones to the appropriate keys. And now we got our beginning colored in red. We can do the same for the next part. We can just use a orange color. So I'm going to duplicate this chain and this time I'm going to give it a color of nine, which is orange. And now I have to move all of these to their appropriate positions because now I have eight keys to worry about instead of just four. That's the left half and that's the right half. We can now repeat this process in order to get a yellow color. Finally, we do this one more time with a green color. And now this is called a velocity mask. So it looks at all of the different keys and assigns each of them a separate color. We can now collapse this part of the effect and add a note length to make it look long and smooth. The second method will allow us to iterate through all of the colors we want for each note of the effect. I'm going to start by duplicating the effect I have now and I'm going to get rid of the velocity mask we created. So now we still have that same effect, but remember I have to pitch it down because I moved the key zone up. So for every single note, we currently have an orange LED. We want this to start with a red LED and then the same LED is going to fade into orange, it's going to fade into yellow, and then it's going to fade into green. We want this to happen with every single LED, but they have to start delayed. So this one still has to start later than this one in order to achieve the effect of the movement. One way to do this is to use an arpeggiator to trigger the effect multiple times. In this case, I'm going to be using four colors. So I'm going to have three steps with a distance of one. This will trigger the effect one to the right at every 130 second. And now I have to duplicate this effect in order to allow it to play more than once. So I'm going to group the entire effect and I'm going to watch the key zones. I start here. This is the first iteration of my effect and I want it to have a red color. I will now duplicate this segment and move it one key to the right. Remember, we have to pitch it down by one now. And now this here effect is going to trigger late because of this arpeggiator giving it a slight delay. Now I can assign this to a different color. And now I have an orange trail going behind the red part of the effect. We can simply do this multiple times for every single color we want. And we get a full fade. This method is usually called trailing. And at the end, I can add a note length to give us the full effect. The problem with this method is that we have to keep the effect in every single chain, and this consumes precious RAM resources. In addition to that, if our effect happens to contain an arpeggiator at any point, we're going to run into the old arpeggiator bug. So having an ARP after an ARP is going to cause our effect to bug out if we are recording. See how the trail suddenly doesn't work anymore? In order to get around this limitation, we use a different technique to achieve the same effect, and it's called fading. I'm going to start all over again with the same effect. This time we're using this key. And now first I will immediately give it a velocity of five, which is our first red color. What I'm going to do next is have a MIDI effect track and I'm going to have two chains inside of it. The first chain is going to trigger the next color and the bottom chain is going to allow the current color to pass through to the end of the track. So we leave the second chain empty and in the first chain we want to create a delay. So we want to add two note lengths, one at note on and one at note off and we want to set them up to match the rate of our light effect, which is one out of 32. So now every time a note from the effect goes off, it's going to trigger a note here, and we can use this to continue to the next color. We can add a velocity with our next color. We can now simply copy this entire MIDI effect track chain, put it down here, and continue over to the next color. You can do this a few times. 
and we are again left with a fade. Because of the arpeggiator's precise timing, a note on can occur at the same time as a note off, which can sometimes cause a note to disappear and we get laggy effects. In order to get around this, we make sure all of our note lengths have a gain of 99%. This is going to slightly shorten your note, which is going to make your fade go a bit faster, but this is usually not noticeable and fixes the fading issue. Additionally, we want to make sure our notes are coming out of the arpeggiator at the correct length, and that they are also coming out of the entire effect track in the correct length. And this gives us a correct full fade. So now we can grab this entire chain and simply call it our fade. Once you get used to how the fading chain works, you can go ahead and download the Velocity Arpeggiator preset from my website. This preset is equivalent to our fading effect, and if we give it the correct colors, it's going to produce the same effect. Of course, make sure it has a matching rate. In order to use the preset and find a correct rate, you have to open it up and go over to Rate Preview, and you just want to make sure your rate matches what's in your effect. With this, you can create fades very easily whenever you want, and you do not have to consume a lot of resources in your live set. And best of all, it doesn't use any arpeggiators, so it works fine while recording. I hope this helped explain the differences between different kinds of multicolor effects, and I hope you learned how to make them quickly and efficiently. If you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments, and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye!